Welcome to this episode of the Heartbeat for Hire podcast. I feature Olympians, CEOs, disruptors, authors, professional athletes, and the best of the best, where they share their stories of resilience with my lens on leadership and culture. Let's get started. Greetings and welcome to this episode of the Heartbeat for Hire podcast. I am beyond excited to bring our guest to you today. Amberly Lago is a widely recognized expert in helping entrepreneurs build their business with grit and resilience. As the founder of the Unstoppable Life Mastermind, Amberly has worked with thousands of clients over her career to find success through harnessing their grit. Her podcast, The Amberly Lago Show, is recognized by Apple as one of the top 1% podcasts in the world. An international speaker on grit, resilience, and connection, Amberly has shared the stages and has spoken for multi million dollar corporations like Lululemon, Google, and Athleta. Her TED Talk has had hundreds of thousands of views to date. A sought after thought leader and best selling author in 19 categories. Her insights have been featured in national media outlets like Forbes, USA Today, The Doctors, Hallmark, The Today Show, and it goes on and on. She has overcome major trauma in her life and has emerged on top by leveraging her proprietary PACER method. And we're going to talk about that, which teaches how to authentically connect with others and leading to unstoppable resilience and success. Oh my gosh, I had to chop this down. Amberly, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited that I get to have this time with you and want to add, my intention is to add as much value as I can to your amazing audience. Wow. And you know, honestly, like as you were reading my resume, I was like, oh, I just feel like I'm a girl still trying to figure things out. You know, oh, I think no. we're all just trying to figure things out. And and actually this morning, my mom, who I've had my podcast for five years now, and it's taken her five years and she finally like listened to the show and messaged me about it. And she was like, oh, I really enjoyed the show. She was like, it was really good. And I was like, really? I was like, mom, I'm just really trying to figure it out. But I think when we come together mm -hmm. and we can connect with like-minded people and we know that we're all just doing the best that we can, okay. that that's how it happens. It, it's so I think true. success is built on relationships. And so I am grateful to have this relationship with you and I understand why you have this amazing podcast that everybody tunes into because you add such value. So thank you so much for having me. Well, it is absolutely my pleasure. I'm so happy that we get to share your story. It's such, a, such an honor. And the whole thing about your mom, my mom saw me live for the first time a few months ago and she was like, honey, you're really good at this. <laughs> I'm going, oh my God, mom, I really, I do this all the time, but thank you. So yeah. It, um, isn't same. that interesting though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like out of the blue, yeah. my mom sends me a, a text message. She's like, oh yeah. Uh, I listened to that episode today. I was like, you did? <laughs> wow. Thanks. Oh, that's so great. Um, <laughs> but were you subscribed to the yeah, show? Right? Yeah. No, if I asked her that, she'd be like, you're going to have to do it for me. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. So, okay. So the way I start every show is the same. And I always ask our guests to share their story. So would you kick us off and just share a little bit of your background? Well, yeah, you know what? I got a lot of stories and it's funny because in our family, it's like, man, if we shared everything, people would be like, there is no way yeah. that can be true. That is like that. Get, that's just got to be crazy. Um, I think though, that I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. Like I started working, um, well, actually at age eight, I started my own babysitting business. By the time I was 13, I was choreographing for the dance studio and like whatever I needed to do to make sure that I could make money to fund the things that I love to do. Like I wanted to be able to do dance class. I wanted to be able to go to the dance competition. So I was an athlete. I was a dancer in my whole life. I have loved being active. Um, and so I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit, which, you know, some people think we're kind of crazy and maybe we are. Uh, but I, I, and actually, and actually my husband, his nickname for me is crazy and I kind of like it. 
uh, that's his love language for me is crazy. I'm like, yeah, I will always keep you entertained. Um, <laughs> but you know, everything changed for me. So I had this and I will, I will skip to the chase and I'll get right into, sure. uh, how I can share why I know about resilience is yeah. because I have overcome so much. Yeah. Um, you know, I moved to LA when I was 18 years old. I had worked at four different jobs to save up $1,200, packed up my little Suzuki Samurai and moved out here. In the first two weeks that I lived in California, I had four jobs, four jobs. I was like, I'm the only one that's going to be, I, I got to keep a roof over my head and whatever it takes. And I remember going into this little cafe and they had a, had a, a self wanted uh, or help wanted sign in the window. And I took the sign off the window and I walked in. I said, yeah, hey, I'm here for a job. I need a job. He goes, no, we're looking for a dishwasher. You're overqualified. And I said, no, I'm not. I need a job. Like I I'm need to work. Yeah. And he he wouldn't give me the job, which, you know what, much respect to him because it pushed me to go for something bigger. Mm -hmm. So I went to a dance studio where they made me audition to get the teaching job. And all of a sudden I was teaching students that were the same age as me or older than me. And I had to learn right away, like they have to know I'm serious about this and I have spent so much time and energy and I had to demand respect actually, because teenagers can be tough, Oh yeah. but you know what? It was amazing. I started my own dance company at the time I was 18 years old and I took a crew, a group of women all over to nursing homes to perform mm -hmm. and do tap dances to bring joy and happiness at nursing homes. And so Having this successful business in, and and also I, I have to say my very first video that I ever did was people were like, oh, you're never going to make it in LA as a dancer. A month after I got to LA, I was dancing in an MC Hammer video <gasps> to Can't Touch This. Yeah. That's, I'm not I kidding mean, you. So after that, people were like, oh, yeah, well, we knew you could make it. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. I was just like, you know what? I had a lot of pain as a kid growing up from a divorced home. There were some addictions. I was sexually abused by my stepfather. And I always say, I think your pain pushes you until your purpose pulls you. And I was so motivated to not give up. I was like, no matter what, I'm not going back to Texas. Well, now here, I live here now again, but it's taking me 31 <laughs> on your years. Terms, though. On your terms. Yeah. But uh, I, I think that, you know, after I was just like, I didn't care. I was like, I was never the best dancer. I was never the best looking. I was never the smartest. I just had grit. Yeah. And we all have the ability to dig in and strengthen our grit and strengthen our resilience. Yeah. And that starts with, and, you know, I just had a long conversation um, with a doctor on, on a call today who was amazing, by the way. And he was like, wow, well, I can't believe all that you do, despite this nerve disease you were diagnosed with, like you live with constant chronic pain, but you do your own events. You speak all over the country. You still your do, do your, all your coaching. You're an active mom. You have a husband that you care about, like all these things. I think it doesn't, it's people want, want to think it's a pill that you take or it's one thing you do. No. no, it's mind, body, and spirit. And if you want to be resilient, yes, it takes grit but it also, you have to know when to give yourself some grace. And that's something that has been hard for me to learn. Yeah, I know because, we uh, talked about that. And I want to dig in a little bit on um, the nerve disease and living with pain. I 
I have a, a faux hip, as I like to call it. Um, and I understand what it is to live with pain, not to the degree that you have, but when you're living in that space, the pain takes up a huge amount of real estate in your head. And it it's does. very hard to focus on anything else. And it's very hard not to snap at people and not to be irritable because you don't feel good. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what this is. What's your method to cope with the pain? And maybe where did it start? Okay, yeah, well, I'll tell you. Um, and yeah, it does make you kind of irritable sometimes. Yeah. You know, it really does. I think it can. And I know that I need to tap into my pacer methodology when I'm starting to drive down the road and yell at people <laughs> in, in the car. And I'm like, and people who Amberly, aren't what, what is wrong with you? Like, this is not, <laughs> who are you right now? This is not the example I want to set for my yeah. kids. You know what I mean? Um, and so, uh, I had this successful career in the dance industry. I had a successful career in the fitness industry for 26 years. I was working with Nike and doing infomercials and videos and everything changed in a blink of an eye when I was hit by an SUV while riding my motorcycle home from work. Mm -hmm. um, I had 34 surgeries to save my leg from amputation. And I thought the worst part was over yeah. only to go to my doctor's appointment and then to say, hey, you have a nerve disease as a result to your injury, you are diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome. There's no cure. You're never going to get better. You're going to be permanently disabled. You need to get back in your wheelchair. Yeah. You'll never wear a shoe. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. Get back in my wheelchair. What do you mean? Like, that's just not the life that I had envisioned for myself. And so I will just say that, hey, pain is pain, no matter if it's from your hip or yep. this nerve disease that I was diagnosed with, or it's a pain that you can't see. It's an emotional pain or, or something, a hardship that you've gone yep. through in a relationship or a divorce. Because I know that my div when I got divorced the, with my first marriage, that was probably just about as devastating as going through my motorcycle accident, but in a different way. Yeah. And so I went through a really dark place and I went through being this fitness person who my whole life was fitness. I was right. never a partier. So I active. was never a, yeah. and I went from being this fitness person to all of a sudden I was trying all these different medical procedures for pain and nothing was working. Like you name it, I was doing it. That is a depressing way to go through life. And for anybody that's been undiagnosed or for anybody that is um, struggling with an illness or a disease that doesn't respond to treatment, that is, it's really hard to keep yourself focused and upbeat and, um, you know, positive. So talk about needing to have grit. I mean, you really needed it. Well, I needed grit for sure, but that was something I always was good at. I wasn't good at much, but I was good at grit. Oh, I and I always well. said without, you know, when, when you've got grit, there is no quit, but this is where I had a lot of misconceptions. Yeah. I mistook health scares for heroic acts I mistook sacrifice for success. I, I mistook fear for a, a way of life. I mistook so many things that were like, what am I doing? Killing myself? Yeah. This is this is not a way to live. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm 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 still learning and I still apply. I have to go back to, okay, Amberly, what are you doing? What are you learning? What do you need to do? And so I remember um, I started thinking, okay, it, this starts with your mindset. And so uh, you talked about something earlier called the PACER methodology. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I still use on a daily basis. And it's something that helped me. And it's actually something when 
uh, TEDx Berkeley reached out to me to do a TED talk and they said, what's the most important message that you would ever share? And I was like, well, I think it's the important message that I live by still today, every day. And PACER stands for um, perspective, acceptance, community, endurance, and rest. Mm. And let me tell you, I just wanted to call this the PACE method, but I've learned the hard way right. that rest and recovery is so important. It is. But when I say, I think it starts with your mindset, uh, I had a lot of haters come after me. Um, I was on the doctor's TV and the headline was girl gets through pain with mindset. And people were like, you can't get through CRPS with your mindset. And I'm like, I, that's not all the interview was about, but I'm saying it starts with your mindset. Yeah. If you don't develop and work on your mindset every single day, and I'm saying that because I still have to do it. Yeah. Every single day from the moment I wake up, I step out of bed and I'm in pain. And I'm like, there are some times, even like last night, I'm laying on the couch with my husband and he's like, let me help you to bed. Man, I was never the kind of person who even wanted help. Yeah. And I'm just grateful that I have a husband that is like going to help me yeah. walk people don't see that side of me. They mm -hmm. see me dancing on stage or they, yeah. they don't see me when I've got a huge flare up and what I have to do to get through that. Well, and I know Amberly, we've talked about this and I've certainly seen it on your Instagram posts where like today was a day I struggled today was a day that I needed to emphasize rest. And I think the whole asking for help, um, and this is such an interesting point on a few levels, but from an entrepreneur perspective and from a just human life perspective, I think people really think that asking for help makes them weak and it makes them seem like I thought know that what they're doing. And I've struggled with that too. And if I ask for help, does it mean that people think I'm not smart or I don't know what I'm doing. And, um, there's a grace in asking for help. And there's a grace in asking people say, you do this really well. Can you help me with that? So can you talk a little bit about what it's been like to learn to ask for help and, and how you help your clients? I think it starts with like, actually the next part of the PACER methodology, which is acceptance. I had to be radically honest with myself mm. and I had to get real. And I think that sometimes we have to take a good, hard look at ourself. Yeah. And a question you can ask yourself is like, how's that working for you? Is it hurting you or is it helping you? Mm. For me, I knew that, you know, I'd tried all these treatments. They weren't helping me. I had then turned to drinking to try to cope with the pain and numb out the pain and become went from being uh, a successful athlete sponsored by Nike, hmm. dancing with MC Hammer, to now I'm a full blown alcoholic. I was like, what? I had so much shame. And so I think in order to ask for help, we have to be in complete acceptance of yeah. where we are, who we are, and what we need. Agreed. And you know what? It takes humility. And Every step of the way as an entrepreneur, as someone who, you know, I got sober in 2016, um, uh, as an entrepreneur, I remember there was this big, um, somebody had reached out to me with some high, really high priced uh, ticket item that was like, and this person got to where they were because they did our program and blah, blah, blah. Well, and I remember I was brand new in the whole speaking world and I reached out to, and I, I give kudos to my friend Trent Shelton all the time because he's amazing. Mm -hmm. But I reached out to Trent and I said, Hey Trent, what is, uh, that? is that this person said this really helped you with this, that, and the other. And my husband was like, you, do you know who Trent Shelton is? You just reached out, you texted Trent Shelton, I was like, well, yeah, I need help. And you know what? I remember 
And you know what? He helped me. He saved me $30,000. Also, I remember when I wrote my book, people were like, oh, you'll never do that. You're the fitness girl. You don't even own a computer. You don't have a college education. And I hand wrote 90% of my book. So if you're listening to this and you want to write a book, if a girl like me can write a book, then you need to go out there and do it. Write the book, write your story, because everything that you have gone through and you've overcome follows, qualifies you to help that person yeah. Yeah. that needs the help out there. But I, I'm sorry, I get a little excited about this topic because Keep going. <laughs> uh, I didn't have a computer. And so I, I hand wrote 90% of my book. And then I had hired an editor and I said, well, what kind of computer do I need? I had lived my whole life on the dance floor or the gym floor. Sure. I was like, I don't know what kind of computer to get. I went to the Apple store. I signed up for every single one of their free classes to teach me how to use a computer. Mm -hmm. And we're there. I'm at the Apple store. And every minute I'm raising my hand. Anybody got a question? I'm like, yep, I do. Yep, I do. And he stopped the class and he said, hey, I just have to say, I am really impressed. He goes, you're the only person I've ever seen in class that wasn't embarrassed to raise your hand for the smallest questions. And I said, well, I'm not embarrassed. I said, I'm passionate learn. about yeah. learning this. And I need to learn it and I need help. Yeah. So I think it's so super, super important to like, I'm a coach and I have a coach. Yep. Same I'm a mentor and I have a mentor. That's right. I invest in a mastermind and I have my own mastermind. Yeah. I think we don't need to think we got to do it all alone. Like go, I always say this too, hire your weaknesses and work on your strengths. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to produce my podcast. And I tried at first and it was hell and I hated it. I was like, oh my gosh, I barely figured out how to work the back end of my WordPress website. Yep. And now I'm supposed to edit doing garage band. Like, oh my gosh, no. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? It's worth every penny to me to yeah. have someone yeah. who they're the expert in that. I'm not the expert. I feel the same. I feel the same. And I think, you know, I'm really interested in your um, advice for up and coming entrepreneurs or people that maybe are joining your mastermind of what are some of the things that that they should be focused on. I, I always tell people, you know, there are going to be gaps. There are going to be things you don't know. And don't kill yourself trying to do it. Hire those people that will help you fill in those gaps and ask other people that are doing it really well for help like you did with Trent. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yes. And I mean, when I say like, I, I've, I've had to learn a lot with, I, I will never forget. It was only like six years ago that I was invited to speak mm -hmm. at uh, an event with Lorna Jane and mm. the other speakers were huge, like Daniel Laporte. And then there was me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to post a picture of myself. <laughs> and I barely knew how to use social media, but I was like, well, I didn't have a lot of money mm -hmm. to invest in someone to help me with that. And so I was like, well, I got to just figure this out. Yeah. And I, one of the reasons I started my mastermind is because I wish you that had I had a community, a tribe of people who were like-minded that could help each other. I, I was just trying to figure out stuff on my own. I had wasted a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It was lonely. Mm -hmm. I was scared. I, and I started getting, as I started to grow, I started getting all these people going, Hey, can you, how, how are you getting on all these stages to speak? How did you book? How did, how were you a guest on Ed Milet's podcast? How were you this? How did you do that? How did you get in Forbes magazine? And I was like, I was, cause I love helping people, especially women. Yes. I have a, I'm, I'm really passionate about 
helping women get, I think we need more strong, Agreed. powerful meeting women on stages and on podcasts Agreed. and with top podcasts. And so I was individually messaging these people back and I thought, you know what, maybe if I just started my own mastermind, I could, we could talk and we could do this together. And so I got certified with a mastermind association, got, you know, after I'd already been in masterminds, I was like, well, I'm just going to figure out yeah. how take and do what I like and pull from that and we'll do it together. But I think that, you know what, when you can ask for help, it, it, that vulnerability, I think in that yeah. connects you on a deeper level. I think so too. And I think people really do want to help. They want to see you win. And I surround myself with people who make me better. Um, and I have know I've got safe spaces with them. Um, and and I, I having a safe space. Yeah. That's what's so important. It's so important. It's so huge. And especially you see somebody doing it well and you reach out to them and tell them, I'm so inspired by what you're doing. Would you spend a few minutes with me? Most people like you will say yes. Um, so anyway, um, what inspires you? My biggest inspiration are my daughters. My biggest inspirations. I mean, let me tell you something. Oh, I get all emotional when I talk about them because I was at a point where I was about ready to give up. I was like, you know what? My husband, he could find another wife. Sure. They could find a better mom. And laying in the hospital bed downstairs one morning, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through this day? The pain is so bad. I just don't know. How am I going to go through the rest of life like this? And my youngest daughter was two years old at the time. And all I heard was mama from upstairs. And I was like, oh, well, I know how I'm going to get through this. I am going to be an example of resilience for my daughters. I'm going to show them that they can get through hard times and they can do hard things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my oldest daughter, I'm so excited. In two weeks, she's coming out to stay with me. And can you believe I don't have a college education and my daughter is getting her PhD at Yale, Yale so University. Good. So good. She's studying to be a doctor. And at one point I had asked her, I was like, wow, what made you, what inspired you to, to be a doctor, to go into the medical field? You know, she's always been a bookworm. She said, well, mom, you did yeah. watching you go through surgery after surgery, 34 surgeries day in and day out of doctor's appointments and hospital visits. And um, so my daughters inspire me. They inspire I, I me to keep why. going. I can see why kids are amazing that way. Um, what would you like your legacy to be? I think my legacy uh, to show people that when we come together and we do things together, that we can be unstoppable together, that there's, there's nothing we can't achieve. And I hadn't thought about that legacy in a long time. You know, I think it kind of changes a little sure. bit here and there, but I think that the things that bring me the most joy is being in community mm -hmm. and, and, and it's what has kept me sober. Yeah. It is what keeps me inspired on this entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. It's what keeps me connected uh, with my church and with my family. And I think community is, community is powerful. And yeah. so I don't know. I'm working on my next book. It's actually called Joy Through the Journey. It's due uh, next year. Um March of 2025. So maybe by then the legacy will change a little bit yeah, more. Who knows? Good, but that's such a great lesson for everyone because what inspires you can change. Your legacy can change. Your You can pivot throughout your journey. And um, I think people 
think that if I say I am doing this and I change my mind, what are people going to think? Who cares? It's your life. <laughs> Just go. Um, so aside from the book, what's next for Amberly? Oh, well, I just got back from my annual Unstoppable Success Summit, which was amazing in Dallas. Oh, my goodness. I'm still, it's been a couple of weeks and I'm, I feel like I'm still On a high. riding the wave of yeah. joy, but also a little bit tired. Yeah. So my, my next things I've got, you know, looking at my whiteboard, I have my whiteboard behind me up in here. I have uh, got several speaking engagements coming up. I'll be everywhere from Costa Rica to New York to LA to Salt Lake City, uh, speaking at different events. And then um, I did a poll in, on Instagram and I was like, hey, where would you like the next Unstoppable Success Summit to be located? And do you know that it was nearly unanimous? They want it back in Dallas. So maybe we'll have it back in Dallas. So we'll have that. And I'll be launching the book at the same time. I don't know. That might kill me. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. You got to have your team like helping you out with that. I'm going to have to have my team for sure. Because... Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, the best of luck with all of that. I'm so excited for you. How can people find you? Oh, well, hey, I just want to say thank you again for having me on pleasure. and oh my goodness uh, you know what I always say take a screenshot of this on YouTube or on Apple or Spotify or wherever you're listening and if you tag me at Amberly Lago Motivation and and tag Lindsay and just say uh, you know hey listen to the show when I see that it makes my my heart sing oh, and I I always share that back in my social media. Um, so amberlylago.com, Amberly Lago Motivation, Unstoppable Life Women is where you can find more about my mastermind. Um, gosh, what else? Everything so basically is amberlylago.com, basically. And I love following you on Insta and we're connected on LinkedIn. So I just am always inspired by what you're doing. And I'm so, so thankful you came on the show. So hey, can I give your listener something free? Please, by all means. You know what? It, we talked a little bit about the pacer methodology, yeah. but I feel like I could talk to you all day and I didn't get to <laughs> give them every yeah, like detail of the pacer methodology. If you want the like free, I've created a free download that will give you this methodology. So Gosh. if you're listening and you're like, yeah, I want to learn something to help me be resilient, to get through um, obstacles or roadblocks, yeah. just type the word grit, G-R-I-T, just that word to 818-214-7378. Again, just type the word grit mm -hmm. and you will get that free download that, so nice. that I've created. And then that's actually me texting you back. So you can always text me and say, hey, what's going on after, after that? But yeah. to get the free download, you just want to text the word grit to that yeah. number and you will get the free download. And, um, Anything yeah, else I can do to support you, Lindsay? Thank that you was so, so generous. much. Thank you so, so much. And guys, I hope you love this episode as much as I did. And if you did subscribe to the YouTube channel or leave a five-star review on Apple and Spotify, thank you for listening. Amberly, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Take thank care you. of yourselves, lead with heart and have a great day. Are you ready to elevate your leadership style and create an exceptional workplace that stands out from the crowd? I'm here to introduce you to a game-changing resource that will transform the way you lead and shape your company culture. It's time to embrace the power of top-down culture. This practical guide empowers your leadership for lasting success, helping you create a workplace where everyone thrives. Get top-down culture today, and let's reshape the future of leadership together. Thanks for listening to this episode of Heartbeat for Hire. I hope you enjoyed what you heard. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or consider leaving a five-star review and a great rating at Spotify or Apple. Thank you so much for your support. Have a great day.